Welcome to Fresh Death Comics. I'm your host, P. Luke. As always, is with me, Hans. Hey, bud, you ready for take two? It is. Take two. We uh, The show's going to be a little late. Uh, we had some sound problems yesterday. Uh, we had a really good episode, too. So uh, we'll have to do... It's just a double take. So technically, it's episode 10.5, if anything. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully it lives up to the uh, previous... Pro- ho- hopefully we can extend it make it even better. That's my hope. Um, it just sounded like we were talking through trash cans, and there's no way to fix it. It was it was awful. Like so, we had two giant trash cans uh, connected with string, like you do the little the paper. Cups. And I was talking through a straw through it. So, oh, a straw and like, a trash can. Yeah, there's and a, a trash paper string. A trash can around me. Okay. Talking to a straw. So no one could hear me. Oh. It was awful. Yeah. And then we boosted the audio. And it was awful. So it sounded like you were at a circus after you boosted it? A little bit. A little yeah. bit of circus. Maybe a little bit like I was surfing in the ocean. And I was just trying to do it. Or or if I was driving a car and the windows were down. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. And it was awful. And it, you know, we, we can't put out stuff like that. If, you, if I can't listen to it for five minutes, how are you guys supposed to listen to it? So here's take two. We're going to do a good job. Uh, this is going to be great. We have a lot to go over. A jam pack a- episode. Uh, we're going to talk about number one picks. We're going to talk about a thing called River Road that's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, but first off, we have to talk about our picks from last week. You picked up a book called The Paybacks. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's up? Did you read your pick this week? I did read my pick okay, this week. Okay, good. I you did. You came prepared. Well, here's the thing. I went to read last... So last week I had uh, Years of Future Past. That was the book I was supposed to read. I was like, oh, I didn't read it. You know, it was just really... I got a couple pages in and I got bored. Went to reread it and found out I did read it. It was just so terrible that I just forgot I read it. That's that, really unfortunate. How bad is a book that you read it and you forget you read it because it's that bad? What stinks is it's only a five issue miniseries. You think that that one small story would be really jam packed and well done and, and keep me entertained. Yeah, but it was. It was so bad. It was boring and dumb and cliched, and it was just the worst piece of crap I've ever read. I, mean, I hate to put it like that, but it was terrible. That's unfortunate. It is. So you know that. So I, I started to realize like I did read this. I want to go back and edit it and say I actually did read it. Uh, but yes, I did read this pick. Uh, I guess we'll start with me since we're already talking about Archie's. Right. Archie's number three. I I've liked one and two. It, it's been okay. It's it's fun. But number three, it is a joy to read. It's so much humor. It's so funny. Really, Jughead and Archie steal the show. Yeah, Between, Jughead was a little more featured than he has been before. He right? has, and it was hilarious. Um, Archie does his whole monologue where he's talking to the audience, but it's the same time life's still happening around him. It's not like Saved by the Bell where the clock stop and everybody like he can walk around, nothing happens. He's talking to us in the audience, and all of a sudden a car almost hits him. Jughead has, has to save his life. Like that was hilarious. You know what? That just got me thinking though. So, so Archie is Zach Morris, right? Correct. Okay. Who is Betty? Betty would be... Kelly Kapowski? Kelly Kapowski, yeah. Or is Veronica Kelly Kapowski? No, Veronica is the other one. Uh, Jessica Spano? Yeah, Jessica Spano. I don't know his character name. That's who I feel it is. So Jughead's just Screech. No, I I think he's Mario Lopez. He's A.C. Slater. He's A.C. Slater. All right. I I, I don't know who... In the reboot, I don't know who Screech would be. They haven't introduced a Screech character. But Jughead isn't your 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 jock type. He is in this book though. He does a lot of things. Like he doesn't attend gym class because he doesn't need to. Like he was just like, "Are you gonna do gym class?" Nah, I'm good, coach. Yeah, but AC Slater loves shooting hoops. Yeah, he loves just being an instigator. Like the, the, this whole thing where like he's like, "We need to fix Archie. We need to help him out." And Veronica or Betty's like, "It's not my problem." He's like, "It better be your problem. We're gonna do something." Like. That's kind of a jock nature. Like, hey, I'm the boss here. You better listen to what I say. So we don't have a Screech yet, and we don't have a Lisa. No, we don't have those. We have a Mr. Belding. Yeah, that's uh, the Christopher Weatherby. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, It's kind of funny. But it's a fun book. I love it. It, 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 I'm going to um, put it on our wall. Uh, Heroes Your Mom Threw Out. We actually have a section for us, for our picks of the week, or picks of the month, or what we think you should be reading. And I'm going to put that up there next time I'm in the shop. Archie deserves to be read. It is one of those books that if you're not reading, you need to read. It is fun. It's great. It's all ages. So, you know, I expected a little more kiddier books, but there's some stuff going on that's like, oh, wow, I can get this as an adult. Like, it's. Yeah, you can kind of relate. Any, I guess. Yeah, I can relate. Cool. It, it was like living in high school. Yeah, sure. All right. The Paybacks. How, how was it? The Paybacks was pretty good. There were a lot of gags in it. It's supposed to be a funny book. Most There's some physical gags. Some writing gags, and I think they all landed. 
give us the overall premise. Like, once you read it, is it a book we all should get? Is it, are you going to get issue two? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. What was fun about the beginning of this issue? Was Night Knight. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> he's a knight that uh, fights crime in the dark, so he's called Night Knight. Or is it that he puts his villains to sleep? I mean... Night Knight! That's not it. He's actually a knight, he has a costume, and he has a unicorn instead of a horse. <sighs> that's that's awesome. But he doesn't... Like, like he's best friends with this unicorn, and, and when they're chasing after him, he's like, Go! Be free! If they catch me, they will catch you! And he's just looking out for this unicorn, but at the same time, he never rides him. Like, he's never atop the unicorn. So he just runs aside. They, they run aside, aside each other like they're partners. They are literally partners. And he just, oh, that's that's cool. And when he sets the unicorn free, the unicorn says, I'll never forget you. The unicorn talks? Yeah, the unicorn talks. Like That's so good. Like, through half the book, the unicorn is silent, and then he just randomly says, I'll never forget you. That's the first thing out of his mouth? Yeah. So the whole time the horse That's the is just first silent. and the last thing out of his mouth. The yeah. horse doesn't talk at all, and all yeah. of a sudden he's just like, "Hey, man, it was a great ride." Yeah, I mean, if a horse did that to me, I'd be pretty upset. It was it was pretty funny. Hans, we're eight days in October. You you've done your thirty one days of horror. How is that going? I mean, it's going okay. We're a little behind though. Oh, we're a little. Oh we're, no, what happens? We're a little behind. Well, give us an update. I got off track, and then we couldn't watch a movie last night because we were fiddling around with the, the podcast. That took some time off of it. We're a couple movies behind. So, what what are we going to... Are we going to watch two movies to make up for it? Yeah, or? we got, We have to watch a couple. I mean, Mirrors is on the list. I know oh. you love Mirrors. No! So, oh, I was so scared. I, was, I, was, I couldn't even... I have not made it through that movie. So, hopefully we so can scared. get that, that uh, squared away tonight, and... Uh, 28 weeks later, hopefully. That's a good It might be 28 days later. Yeah, because you don't have a Blu-ray I player. don't have a Blu-ray player, so that might screw that up. Um, and Feast is also Feast, on the I schedule. Feast, yes. Feast is scheduled for today, so we should have that done. 
All right, so we're working Playing on a little it. catch up. So, but I know you've been posting stuff on Facebook. It, it's been great. It's kind of yeah. I got to tell you, dude. Three movies in, I think I found my winner for movie of the month. Which one? A girl walks home alone at night. Was that the winner? I th- it, like it's it's a. It's like, a I, I read runner. a little bit. What you said it was a foreign film. Yeah, it's a front runner for the film of the month though. It was why is it scary to you or was no, it was really it well wasn't done? Scary. It was it was just a really well written film, and it was done in black and white, and the soundtrack just it was perfect. Cool. So everything went together really well. Marvel has decided to reboot the whole comic book side of their industry by making all new number one books. So it's all new, all different Marvel. Yet again. Yet again. Yeah, they did this about a year ago. But they're doing it again because they can. And some of the books I'm excited for, some I'm just like, whatever, why are they doing this? Um, Like Howard the Duck, I don't know why. You know, it doesn't seem necessary to reboot it since it's only five issues in. But it is what it is. You accept it. You take it. Whatever. But there's some books coming out that, number ones of brand new things are happening. It makes me excited. It's just like a reboot. Kind of a refresher course. Like, when you're running off a road so far and you're just like, man, I want to start over. It's like a redo. We compile our list of the top five books that belong on this list. A couple of honorable net mentions I would like to do uh, is Blade. I am excited about that. Uh, We haven't seen Blade really in his own book in a very, very long time. And we haven't seen him in the books, period, in... The last time I remember him in comics was when he was in that X-Men arc and they were fighting Dracula. Correct. That that is the last time I remember him. Was it really? It was. was, That was what I was going to say. I was going to say the same. That was the last time he was in a book. I can't believe that. And it's it's one of those things where I don't know why they haven't used Blade. Like, I, thought I, it, I don't know if it's because Wesley Snipes is out of prison now and he's now available. I don't so think that has anything to do with it. You don't think it has anything to do with but it. But dude, I need my Wesley Snipes fix. Like, I hope they make a new movie. Maybe, maybe this is the plan. If the book does well, yeah. they can do a movie. So, you know, out of our mention, just for Wesley Snipes. Yeah. And another one uh, I'm personally excited about is Old Man Logan. He's getting a number one book. And that's going to be great. It's going to be super. Uh, I can't wait to see what they do. Um, we don't know too much about the plots. Yeah, honestly, I don't care about him being thrust into the current universe. I want to see him in his own universe, in his own element, fighting his own demons. Now, what if he takes things that he knows, like if he sees certain events happen, he's like, oh, wait a minute, I remember this from my own timeline. Let me go fix it. Because he's so many years in, in the future than we were. So he can go and be like, oh man, hey, listen, Quicksilver is going to rob the bank and and thought, and then that's going to bring apart uh, all the mutants ganging up and just destroys the whole fabric of India. And they're like, all right, let's all go there. You know, it's just one of those things where like his, we can do a flashback of what happened and he tries to change it, almost like a minority report. So it's almost like he, um, it's almost like he has psychic Almost, it's, it's just like him. A connection, like, and I like to see it maybe a couple times when it's wrong. Like he's like, oh no, Jean Grey is going there. She's going to call the Phoenix and she kill thousands of people. And he goes, there like, you can't do this, and she doesn't do it. I don't and know. He's it's... like, oh man, I, I, I hope it goes that way. If it goes that way, I'll be super excited. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not interested in seeing him in the regular Marvel universe. I, I, it just, it doesn't interest me. Even if they do this whole thing, I suggested. Yeah, I mean, I just want to see him in his own timeline, in his own element, doing his own thing. I, I hope, I'm excited to do it when I say it. So that's why it's an honorable mention, because we don't know what to expect from this book. If it turns out to be just him being old and grumpy and going, uh, I I had to wax my face today, it was terrible. Well, he's I'm not going to like that. He's just replacing the Wolverine that they killed off. Three months ago. Uh, correct. And if they're doing that, then I'm going to be upset. That's all they're So that's why it's not on my top five list. It's just an honorable mention. You know, we can throw that out. So number five on the list is Doctor Strange. It's written by Jason Aaron and Chris Pacello. And I'm super excited for it. it I'm not a big Doctor Strange fan, but I'm a huge Jason you, Aaron How fan. much do you really know about Doctor Strange? How much does anybody know about I know from basically the Spider-Man television show he was in it for a little bit. I know from New Avengers. He, he played a pretty pivotal part in that. But as for his story himself, I don't think he. No one does know a lot. I mean, no, he, there hasn't been a Doctor Strange story since Roger Stern did it. Really? Yeah. Uh, there, he, he's been in, in. He's been in things. 
He's been on teams. He's done this, but he's never done a solo adventure in a, quite a long time. So I'm excited. And with Jason Aaron behind the realm, when he did Hulk, he totally revolutionized. I don't buy Hulk, but I bought Hulk because Jason Aaron did it. Jason Aaron is a master at his craft. He can make a character that you go, ugh. He's the Jeff Johns of Marvel. Because he the did Jeff Johns. Yeah, Jeff Johns did Aquaman. No one cares about the guy with the underwater fork. But he made the story so well and so he did such a good job with it. Now people actually go, hey, do you have any Aquamans? I really like Aquaman. In what world do you get people who like Aquaman? And then plus that, the artist, Chris Pacello. Yeah, Chris Pacello. I absolutely love his art style. Uh, what he'll do is he will break free from the generic square panels and make the entire page his panel. For me, it was hard for me to read until you kind of told me like it all kind of flows. There is no panel by panel. It's all kind of a right. seamless page. So for me, I have to stare at like it's one of those uh, optical illusions. And I have to strain hard and you know the ones you see a sea boat. I have to stare hard at it and I go, oh, there it is. It's just like a, an ocean of colors and magic. But what's great about that is it plays into the Doctor Strange character. It adds to the magic and the mysticism. Of so number four on our list is Spider-Woman. Spider and you are Spider pumped Woman. for this. You are so pumped for this book. Me, I'm not so much, but it was so high on your top ten list. I have been enjoying this book from Dennis Hopeless since issue five. Now, I will not discredit the work they did for the first four issues... But the whole spider event, the spider verse, it, it sort of uh, turned me off to the book. And but, I did, that happened to me because I read, I, I had to read because of spider verse. I got the issue four and I said, "See you later." Yeah. And you got mad at me for it. Yeah, because issue five is the real number one issue, and I think everybody should pick up starting there. It's a real fun ride with Jessica Drew and Ben Urich. And now what's happening in whoa, the whoa, 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 time? Ben Urich and Jessica like. What yeah. do you mean? Ben here. They're fighting crime together. They're solving... How does that work? He's like 60 years old. Is he really 60? He's pretty old. Like he's... I don't know. So, so he has these case files, and he's like these unsolved mysteries, sort of. Okay. And he and Jessica Drew go out with this guy called the Porcupine. <laughs> That's a funny name. And they just solve crimes. It, it was fun. So we have si solves crimes with Ben Yurk. Ben Yurk has been whatever, but... Hans, there's over 60 new number ones. Yeah. Personally, this is what, your number three on the list? Yeah, this is my number why three. Is it, number four. Why is it so high on your list? Like, why does everyone need to get because this Because all of a sudden, Jessica Drew is pregnant. What? Exactly. Like, how? Who's the dad? I don't know. Who's who's the dad? Is the, is the that's question. That's the question like, nobody knows? That's what we need to is find out. Is it Ben Yurk? That's what I need to find out. I don't think it's Ben Yurk if he's 60 years old. Why can't it be him? I mean, who knows? Maybe it is him. But... Maybe it's the porcupine. But then at the same time, he has his own family. Maybe it's a scroll baby. Maybe it's an alien that we don't know about. Now, here, here's the question. Maybe it's Dr. Doom's baby. He, here, here's a question for you. Is the baby what's driving the book for you? Is that what's so high as you want to know who this baby is? Yeah. Now, once you find out who the baby is, let's say it is Dr. Doom. That's awesome. If it's Dr. Doom or Ben Yark. That's real what, weird, man. What like, if it's an alien baby? How did Dr. Doom do that? What if it's an alien baby? Does your level of excitement drop down? I mean, it depends on what happens with the baby. Like it, I, there's so many options. There's so many things it could be. But I can't even fathom. Yeah, I but don't know. once you find out, like, let's say it is aliens. Does it make you go, oh, I didn't want it to be aliens? There's nothing that would say I didn't want it to be that. Because I don't have... A, a no, clue what, as what to if it's who it like, is to begin with. What if it's like Wolverine? There's nothing that would disappoint me at this What point. if it's like Wolverine and the X-Men where Kitty was pregnant but it turned out to be a brood inside of her? Yeah. What if it's a brood inside Jessica and inside Jessica? I mean, that's cool. Your investment is you don't care who it is as long as it's a baby that pops up that she has to raise. I mean, what if it turns out to just be uh, just a swarm of something? I want to know what it is and how it happened. Now, do you want the baby to stay or do you want the baby to be gone after it happens. Like, do you want her to take care of this baby? For I mean, I feel like that's not my decision. I feel like that's Jessica Drew's decision. For your interest of the book, it is. It's your decision whether or not. Like, if you're going to read it, it, the life of the baby depends on the reader. It would be interesting to see how she deals with having a baby and fighting crime at the same time. Now, if a nanny is involved, do you think it should be Squirrel Girl? No, because I think they've taken Squirrel Girl and they've made her a joke. No, man. Squirrel Girl is one of the best books. When she became the nanny of the New Avengers... Right. I think 
the Bendis was on that book. It right? was. Yeah, I think Bendis uh, actually sort of made it a serious point, and now Squirrel Girl has just transformed into a joke. No, she's not a joke. Man. The yeah. book is great. You need to read it. Uh, that's going to get number one as well, but it's not on our list. Uh, number three, Invincible Iron Man, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Invincible Iron Man or is it Invisible Iron Man? Invincible. Because I think Invisible Iron Man would be a lot of fun. It would be, but this time he's Invincible. Invincible Iron Man, written by Brian Michael Bendis and art by David Marquez. So I think... If he's invisible, he would just sneak up on the Mandarin, tap him on the shoulder, and then the Mandarin would turn around and be like, oh. And then, and then now, Iron the, Man the would nice just blast thing, him from, from... The nice thing about the new Iron Man, it's a whole new costume, so he could have invisibility in it. Ooh. He mentioned it in a book. Someone had mentioned, like, oh, do you have invisibility? He was like, oh, that's a good idea. So, I mean, it could. One thing that is a little disturbing is the, the toe design. It looks like he's a Ninja Turtle. No, I think that's just Ryan Stegman's art. No, I, I've, I've looked through the book, and he's got it uh, everywhere. I don't know, man. I think that's just a little bit no, of Ryan Stegman. No, he looks like a Ninja Turtle in there. I mean, it's going to be interesting. But the best part about the book, we, we've already read it. Or not read we perused it. And the ending of the book is by far one of the greatest things in the whole entire world. Well, I mean, I'm hoping the lead-up to it is also fantastic. Oh, cool. But, cor- the, but cor- the final page, it just like, all right, now I'm buying this. Yeah, and it sealed spo- the deal. So we'll do spoiler alert. It's Doctor Doom. Yeah, and it's his face. Yeah, he's unmasked, no armor, nothing, just Doctor Doom. Which reminded me of Superior Foes, written by Nick Spencer. Yep. They spent the whole time trying to get the, try to get this poster that shows his real face, and the whole adventure led up to it. We never saw the face. They always did fun things where they covered it up somehow, or someone's face was in front of it. Um, but now we see it. And I'm just like, oh. Superior foes, here's his face here. You're good. Like everything you did did not matter. Like your whole mission where you gained like almost died didn't count. But the real question I think is is it his real face? Is it his real face and why is he all of a sudden unmasked? How did he get to this state? And that that lies from is it a secret wars question? Or well, I mean, does it I take place it after six be. Secret Wars? And that brings me to a question of whether or not it's good that Secret Wars was delayed. For us to wonder these questions brings excitement to the book. Makes me go, oh, I'm so excited to find out what happened. If I already knew what happened because of Secret Wars, like Secret Wars explained the answer to me, seeing his face would have been like, oh, he's in it. Okay, cool. I know you're not because you love Doctor Doom. Yeah. But for me, it would have been like, oh, well, he doesn't have a face anymore because he, he fixed it by something that happened in Secret Wars. But I don't know, so I'm excited. There, so for me, it's a good thing Secret Wars is late. There's just so much potential with Doctor Doom being in any story. I feel just about anything can happen because he is the ultimate crazy when it comes to villains. He's my second favorite villain. I mean, I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah. He's the second favorite villain... Only topped by Norman Osborn. Which which is a good point, because Norman is also up there in the crazy scale. but He is the crazy scale. When you do a scale, it's Norman Osborn. It, it, like, you're three out of ten Norman Osborn's crazy. Like, yeah? Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it, that's what the scale is. If you say Doctor Doom, you're seven out of ten Doctor Doom crazy. That doesn't really equivalent to anything. Green Goblin's involved. You got craziness up the wazoo. But Doctor Doom, he's good because he's smart. He got things under control. Yeah, there's, like there's, he always has a master plan. There's a lot of potential, and that's what makes both, him good for both villains. I'd I'd like to see him team up. I think. I don't think they could. I think their ego, their personalities and their egos would so their clash, egos yeah. clash together. They'd yeah. run against each other. They they'd, would they'd try to set up each other. other. Like be like, oh hey, I have this plan. Let's do this. You should go to the this warehouse and wait, and he bombs the warehouse. But, Doctor Doom knew it, so he bombs him. Like it would just be that. It would just be Spy other. versus Spy from Mad TV, that, that Mad Magazine. It, exactly. Yeah. I would like to see them two fight each other. Like they both want Dom. That would be a good book. Well, first we need uh, Doom versus Goblin. First we need uh, the Goblin to come back. He's been. Back. I feel like he's, he's alive. He's, he's he's alive. He happens like they did this whole thing with Goblin Nation, Spider Man, a few years ago, and then. Yeah. Nothing. But he's, he's so gone. far underground and nobody's touched him in 
I don't know how long. Since the Goblin King. Since yeah. two years ago. With, uh, when two Superior, years? Or you, last year when, when Spider-Man was uh, became Spider-Man again and Doc, Doc Ock died. Gotcha. I mean, that's the last time I saw him. I'd like to see him come back. It's been a while. Doc, uh, he's such a great villain. It, he needs to come back. So, that's my opinion. I, I love, this is Iron Man. is going to do great. It's fantastic. It, it's going to be great. Uh, number... Two on the list. Uh, it's my number two for you, Hans. Uh, I know you didn't care too much about it, and that's Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, that didn't even hit my list, man. It did me. I am so pumped for this book. It's my number one choice. It. I am so excited about this book. I write a little bit of the front pages. Jokes were landing. They were hitting. It was a fun ride. And then you were upset by the ending, so I skipped the book. I went to the ending. Well, it's not even the ending. It's the ending of the first story. The ending of the Amazing Spider-Man story. See, I don't even. I, you just, there's so many there was backup a, stories. There was there's the a panel Silk you backup me. story. There's a Spider-Woman backup story, which you better read because that's going to be good. And <laughs> there's a Spider Web Warriors. Web Warriors. Web yeah. Warriors backup story. And then there's another Amazing Spider-Man backup story. And then there's just another backup story. So, one bad part of it, and why it's probably not number one on the list. So the main problem I have with the book, it's five ninety nine. It it's a hike. It's it's expensive. It totally got slapped in the face when you got to that mid page. It wasn't. It wasn't a slap in the face. I don't know what's going on. It's maybe it's not what we think. It is what we think. It's exactly what you saw. Your eyes did not deceive you. You saw Doctor Octopus's face. Yes, but it wasn't really Doctor Oct. Is it? Is it just a computer program of him? And if he's back, why is he back? I'd like to know. Like, Dr. Ock's a great villain. I like Doc Ock. I need them to stop killing people and bringing people back. That's never going to happen in a comic. It takes com- away the entire purpose of... I don't know. It just it just takes the meaningfulness of their death away. Think about this. Spider-Man finally defeated Doc Ock, but now he's back. Correct, he's back. And think about this. Doc Ock knows everything about Peter Parker. Yeah, he does. He knows everything. Why so not? why is he... That's the great... Vi- like, he's going to be a great villain. Peter Parker now has to face his greatest enemy. We have an enemy who knows everything about him. And not even just like, oh, I know Peter Parker's Spider-Man and Aunt May's your aunt. He knows everything about him. He knows what he looks like naked. He knows where he sleeps. He knows what he fears. He knows everything about him. Here's the thing. He has to face his greatest enemy, right? You said that? Correct. Again. This has happened so many times. Like, But this time, it's, it, the bar has been raised. How many times does Peter Parker need to take down Doc Ock for us to realize that he can do it? But He's the, done it. Yes, he's it's done over. it. He beats him time after time. I don't again. need that story for the 30th time. But the bar has been raised. Now, we have uh, Dr. Ock has a major advantage. Just create a new villain and move on. They did that. It didn't work out well. <laughs> I mean, apparently Dan Slott is just not a creative man because he's using the same story over and over again. I will give you... I'm going to kill him, bring him back, kill him, then bring him back, then kill him, and bring him back and kill him, and then kill him, bring that one back, but not the other one. In theory, your plan is correct, but when you actually take a look and think about it, yeah, I wouldn't like him using Doc Ock so soon. Like, I, if he, What if this is just an appearance and small appearances in two years? It's not. It's shock factor, so you can buy a $6 book. That's how you justified buying the $6 book. I will let you know next week if it was worth it. How about that? Sounds fantastic. We'll do that. So number one, our number one book of the number ones coming out. This one's not going to come out until a little bit later. In the spring, I think In it the was. spring. But it's written by Jeff Lemire. And the book is Moon Knight. I'm pretty excited for it, man. So they're putting Moon Knight in an insane asylum. They're wrapping him in the straight jacket, and we got to find out if his whole story was him just being in an asylum the entire time. One of my favorite things ever is people in an insane asylum. I love stories that go there. When Wolverine was in one, it was great. I love television shows that go there. I don't know why I love it so much. But Did you ever so- think about going yourself? I've thought about it. Like I'd like to, I'd like to go in there and see what it's all about. Like it, it'd be awesome. It, it, if I could somehow end up there just for a week without any rant, like like not being crazy, like not have to take pills, like somehow like I can go and visit or maybe doing a report. That'd be awesome. But I, I it's so interesting with books like this book here. Everything that's happened in the Moon Knight did it actually happen? Because if you take a look at the Marvel books, 
any big event, Moon Knight's not in it. The last big event he was in was in Shadowland. And he just made a brief appearance. And it was his own individual story. He wasn't with anybody. So the whole fact that like we don't know if he is one or not, Deadpool did it in his books too, and it was great. I This book is so exciting. It has it a is, lot of potential. But also a lot of failure. Like it, it, It's going to be either a big hit or a soft hit. And the last Moon Knight book I was excited for. Yeah, with Warren Ellis. Yeah, and that one turned out to be a stinker. The first six issues, you you would have expected something insane to happen. I mean, they were good little split up stories every once in a while, but uh, overall, I mean, the best part that uh, we've said this multiple times for me, the best part was him killing people in the window, and each panel was a different red out character. I think it was. I think it was issue three, maybe. It might have been, but yeah, the, just, the majority just the of it was a picture of that book. Issue was was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a picture book. That, that's all it was for me. And so, I mean, I won't argue with that. That's and it comes to Moon Knight. You gotta have more than a picture book with him. Oh yeah. They're so, like, you need to have him do his talking to himself, like, not knowing what's real, what's not. Like, you need to have more than that. And I'm excited to see what happens. Jeff Lemire does a great job with stuff that deals with this. Like, so, number one, I'm excited for it. We'll find out next week whether or not Spider-Man was awful. In two weeks, October 18th, at Tioga Downs, is going to be River Road. It's a free Comic-Con. It's a lot of fun. Uh, free admission. Come in there. You can gamble if you want. Do some drinks. Meet creators of books. It's it's a fun time. I love going every year. Hans, you go most of the years. I think you've been to almost every one. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so, and actually, uh, two artists uh, we have, we actually going to review their books. Uh, we have them here. We got some exclusive copies of them. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is Hench Girl, written by Kristen Goodsnick. It's great. I really, really enjoyed this book. It, it's funny. It's adventurous. It, it made me laugh. There was a lot of scenes where I'm just cracking up and I can relate to. It's a book where she doesn't have any money. The only job available that she can get is being a hench guy or hench woman. And I think about that myself. Like if I need some extra cash, you know, working for a villain isn't so bad. I mean, you think about working for Walmart, everyone calls that the evil empire. You know, isn't that the same thing if you're helping them make money? But who is she really working for? Did they really describe the organization? Like, all she said is crime. Like, she's working for crime or something like that? Like, th- I th- think that's his name. So, so there is that. There is... Um, I don't think there's a lot of description to these characters. I don't think there's a lot of characterization. I don't really get to know them. It was issue one. We, we met the one girl, the one girl... Uh, we met Sidekick. Sidekick was really cool. Like, they're... they're you know, he's gotten paid to be a sidekick. There's the the main, I guess, antagonist woman who is always the employee of the month. Coco on. Coco, like, they, they introduce all the characters. Yeah, we don't know a lot of them. But Coco Khan's, a, like, the antagonist of you, of if you will, character. And she always has these great ideas. They're always smart. Like, her... her thought is to go and stop people from attending an orphanage like be bodyguards no one goes into an orphanage to make money which is a good plan like if no one can come into the place there and drop an orphanage they just get money it's a good one but hench girl comes up with this plan to rob a mansion which that's a good plan too I mean if I had to think of some place if I needed money and rob for me I, I, I'd rob the Tommy Hilfinger mansion should I let him know like ahead of time no I mean I'm not really going to do it I mean, oh, okay. I'm, not a, I'm not a henchman um, but you know, in the area, you think of the richest person in your area where you live. So if you live in the city, maybe it might be, you know, Will Smith, who knows? Uh, you know, if it's Buffalo, it might be Rex Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Rex Ryan is officially the richest man in Buffalo. I would like to say so. I mean, he's got the Buffalo Bills under his thumb. He, he does a good job with them. You think about like every place like if you had to think of some place off the flight where could you make a lot of money you think of the richest person in town and robbing from them i mean it's kind of a, a go-to so hers isn't a great plan but it's a smart one it's it's one like it seems legitimate but not even about that it's just the book excitement there's a lot of jokes the one thing that upset me in the book was there was a deleted scene that they put at the end of the book that should have been in the actual book that joke was hilarious and it, it made me laugh. I think the jokes that were in the book uh, didn't land at all. I did. I thought it was well done and um, well crafted. It, it was a phenomenal book. They, they, 
they did not make me laugh. And the deleted scene was actually the one that made me chuckle. Like, that should have been in the book. They they shouldn't have used the rewrite. They should have used the, the original scene that they took out. Yeah. Now, what's fun is we actually have an exclusive variant. Uh, it's uh, the Heroes Your Mom Throughout variant. And it's kind of fun. It's got the Hero Bot Graffiti on there. It has uh, the name on there. It, it, it's a fun cover. If you kind of look at it, it's almost, you know, I don't know. I, I really like this cover. It, 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 the one it, thing I did enjoy nice. the most about the book is the art. I think the art complemented the the intention of the story. It, it, it flowed. It, it made it... It's, for me, it just helped bring out everything that's great about this book. Um, everything from the violence to the powers to her. Uh, there's a part where she's just trying to figure out her costume and she's like, I don't know what to do with this. Like It's hilarious. There's a girdle thing, whatever that is. So uh, another book, another person. So uh, Kristen's good snick is going to be there. Um, another person is going to be here, Sean Lewis. He is the writer of the book Saints. Yeah. Hans, you really enjoyed Saints. Uh, I didn't. So why don't you tell everyone what you liked about the book? I, I think the uh, overall story is uh, quite intriguing. So what what's going on is these. Uh, I don't I don't know what to call them powers. I mean, I guess we'll call them saints, but they they have powers like divine ability powers. Divine, yes, they're they're divine figures, um, and they have powers. <laughs> um, and there, there's a dream sequence, and within the dream sequence, it's it's sort of bringing everyone together. Like each of these three characters that we've three main characters that we've met so far are being brought together uh, by by their own dreams. For me, the book, it, it threw me in the first few pages. I really didn't like the Satanist stuff they were doing in the f- front of the book. Well, I don't um, think that's a main part of the story. But it's for just me, like it, a little it, disturbed, minor, it disturbed me It's a little much. minor introduction that allows you to um, meet our, the main character, Blaze, and understand his abilities. Yeah, but they have a, in the beginning of the book, they have a guy peeing into a cup. Yeah, that's pretty for, impressive, right? I've, that grosses me out, man. I don't want... Mm. And the guy, other guy drinks it. That's disgusting. Well, he just wanted it, to be it disturbs me so much that I, I, I have a hard time. I have a hard time jumping back on the wagon. It's like when if someone just like your first impression of someone, they turn out to be this disgusting pervert guy. Like, yeah, he might be a great guy. Like you have to get to know him, but it's hard for you to jump right back in and go, oh, you know, he's a pretty good guy. But that's like, not, it, it disturbed that, me so much. That's not the main character. Corre- correct. It's that's not just the main a character. Random band that he's hanging out with in the beginning of the book. But it's in there. It happens, and so it does it, so I'm trying to jump into this, and then they have this one guy who just appears out of nowhere, and it's just like, "Hey man, let's go on an adventure. Let me take you to the supermarket." And he, I mean, it's not a bad book. I, I would like to read issue two. If you buy it, I'll read it. But I don't think I want to spend my own money for it. It's. I mean, here's here's a good point. It's two ninety nine for the book, and it's a jam pack issue. Yeah, there's a lot of content. There's a lot of pages. A lot of content for three bucks when you can pay uh, six bucks for Spider Man and get slapped in the face. <laughs> now the Hench Girl book is five dollars, but it also is the variant, the Heroes variant. Um, so that's a double plus. I mean, it's pretty cool. You open up, so you you have the Hero Bot on it, and then you open up, and there's actually a full sp- spread of the Hero. Heroes kind of add on there, which is kind of cool to see your local a uh, comic book shop on the page. That that's awesome. That's fantastic. But you know, five dollars for the book for for a variant for your local comic book shop being on a variant. I think that's very well done. I think it's great. I think Image is doing great things uh, with the, with the prices and the the content that they're releasing. They are. I mean, now with all the books going to four ninety nine, three ninety nine, three ninety nine, and four ninety nine seem to be the typical going price of books. To have a two ninety nine on the shelf is is refreshing. I, I really applaud her Image for doing that. Hans, you know what time it is? Six. Time for our pick of the weeks. Our pick of the week this week. Uh, you already know mine. Mine's going to be Spider-Man. I will make that my pick of the week. I'm terribly sorry. I'm excited for it. So we'll You're find out. You're putting it on a pedestal. I'm putting it on a pedestal. Let's hope it stays there. Your pick of the week, Hans. What is your pick of the week? Uh, since we've already discussed a lot of the Marvel number ones. Like Spider-Man's going to be good. Yeah, sure, if you think so. Um, I, I was speaking of uh, Iron Man, Doctor Strange. Are you going to choose any of them? 
Uh, I'm actually going to choose an image book. I'm going to go with uh, Paper Girls, issue one by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. What's great about this book initially is that it is $3, and it's almost two issues. There are a lot of pages in this book. I will say it's two ninety nine. So there's a lot of content. And it looks bigger than the Spider-Man book. Yeah. I will give you that. So price-wise, you win. There's, there's a lot of content here, and I've never really uh, jumped on to a Brian K. Vaughn book, but apparently it is the thing to do with Saga and Why the Last Man being and so successful. We stand on guard. We stand on guards out right now. Um, he's doing a lot of great things, getting great reviews, so I figured I'd pick this up with issue one. So what we have is the American Newspaper Delivery Guild, I guess, and it's a group of uh, young girls that deliver newspapers, and they stumble upon some sort of secret. And I don't know what it is, and I don't want to look ahead to spoil it or anything, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a grand adventure. For me... I, I picked it up. Brian K. Vaughn, he does great things. And for me, like I can relate a lot to it because I did a paper delivery thing for a week and it was the worst experience of my life. So I can't imagine making a career, a career out of it. Anyone who delivers a paper has kudos. They, they get kudos for it because it's tough. I had to recruit my mom when I delivered the paper because I, I got lost. I didn't know where houses were. So the fact that these girls are on a bike doing this in the middle of the night it's it's terrific, and I'm 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 excited to see this journey. Like the fact that they're making it a career to do it, because it's a tough thing to do. It's kind of neat. It's uh, I, I guess you'd call it a period piece because it's set in the eighties. I was gonna say it looks like the eighties, yeah. the way their hair is and stuff like that. Which through when I did my paper on, I had a cell phone. I had I was looking up addresses on Google Maps. I can't imagine doing a paper out without having that like finding streets is tough yeah real maps man real maps are hard. you can't use a real map and ride a bike at the same time at least i don't think so i know i couldn't i can't do it when i ride a bike thanks for listening uh, again uh the river road is going to be october 18th at tiger downs in nichols new york it's going to be from noon to five it'll be a lot of fun uh i can't wait to meet christian goodsnick and talk to her about hench girl and see you know what's going to happen whether we can ask her why the deleted scene wasn't in the book that'd be fun to know it was in the book it was in the end i mean i why wasn't in the why was it a deleted scene why didn't she keep it that's that's my number one question for her. why didn't she keep it it was so funny and we'll talk to S- saints and ask him i'm gonna ask him about why why is the peeing thing in the book that was disturbing this has been fresh death comics i'm your host b luke with me is hans thank you for joining us <laughs> bye-bye